Uh, is a methodology of resolving challenges that emerge in relationship uh, he is to considered to be a superior methodology and uh, the world adopted it uh, the great examples of uh, uh, the civil rights movement led by Martin Luther King and uh, the campaign against apartheid by Nelson Mandela are evidences to the uh, uh, success or the superiority of this methodology. Friends, 21st century we thought would be an era of so refined uh, civilian relationship. But unfortunately the, this century started with a, a massive attack on uh, fundamental rights, human rights or the sovereignty of nations. Do you know Twin Tower? That was the stock reali reality that uh, revealed to us that while we came into 21st century, our mind, our perspectives have not matured enough to uh, be in 21st century. Satyagraha is all the more important today. All the more important. The journey of uh, civilization is a kind of undulating journey. Ups and downs keep coming. And uh, today, at, across the world, we see this undulation taking us into an uh, alarming low, right-wing sway, whether it is in the most developed country like US or most uh, promising country like India, uh, the propensity is one towards right-wing. And on this occasion, if right-minded people do not rise, we will be blamed for the further fall. And on this count, Satyagraha is even more important for all of us. When we talk about Satyagraha, I would like to bring few insights that Gandhi gave uh, to your notice. The first of all, Satyagraha is not a weapon of the weak. It is the weapon of the mighty. It is not uh, said this way to encourage people. The innate potential, if you understand, then you will realize, yes, truly it is a weapon of the strong. You ask yourself, if you have a challenge, would you like to address it physically by hitting each other uh, on the street or try to address it intellectually? You would certainly come to the understanding it is better, it is more superior for us to address it intellectually. We can, uh, I mean, with the reason, logic, uh, profound understanding of the situation and the detailed information, we would like to encounter the opponent uh, with uh, intelligence and uh, either convince or win. We always believe that is superior. If that is true, then Satyagraha is that. And not only that, there is a moral position you take when you adopt Satyagraha which make your rational approach even more strong and invincible. That is what Gandhi was doing. When the whole world thought uh, fighting against each other even for right is a fundamental duty and uh, in that way, people justified physical attack. If somebody is suppressing us, I have the right to defend my life, I, I have the right to take weapon and fight. Gandhi said, that is a very primitive methodology. That is a primitive methodology. That is a superior methodology. The methodology superior is that with whom are you fighting? That is the question he asked. With whom are you fighting? In the new emerging context, there is no other person. There is no enemy. You must see the context in which Satyagraha emerged. In South Africa, when, when Gandhi went, there were uh, Indians who went almost 30-35 years before him in large number, about 100,000 people. There were Malays, there were Dutch people, there were Britishers, there were native people. It was a nation with multi cultural, multi-racial uh, setting. 
first time it was evident for Gandhi that in this multiple uh, diverse uh, demography, which are not different nations, within one nation, within one boundary, fighting against people who suppress with weapon would be suicidal. With others you can. At least you can justify. With the people who are on the other side of the boundary, you can for a while justify. But uh, the opponent, the other, is no more on the other side. They are on your side. So he said, the, there is no other, our fight is within. It is not without. It is not with others, it is within. If you are going to fight within, then you cannot take weapon. You cannot take weapon. This is something very, very fundamental. We need to take it. In the national context, we have sworn again and again, all through our school days, all through our college days, that this is our, this is our uh, nation family, all our brothers and sisters, Having said it, having sworn to be brothers and sisters, if we think that the other person, because the other person is wrong, is worthy of my anger, worthy of my hatred, then we are falling into primitive methodology. Primitive methodology. We cannot do that. Friends, Satyagraha is not just a fight against uh, uh, the wrong. It is not just a fight against the enemy. It is an attempt to build relationship. We need to understand it. It is a very superior methodology of constructing uh, a new society. It is not the Gandhi reiterated that point. Reiterated that point. It is not just a weapon of the victims. It is not a weapon of the victims. Of course, the victims are taking up the weapon but not as a victim, but as a constructor of the society. So, when you want to solve a problem in the society, even if you are a victim, you have to take a dual role. You have to fight for your right by reconstructing or re recreating a new narration in which we are all equal, we all stand on equal platform. That is something that he was reiterating. So, when he was attacked, or Satyagraha is where attacked. Gandhi said, let us not retaliate. Because retaliate, retaliation will uh, divert the focus. Divert the focus. Uh, if I uh, fight for my rights and uh, the opponent is hitting me, and if the, in order to protect me, if I hit back, my hitting will become a primary issue. Why I hit will be sidelined. There is a profound realization in that. At home we learn it. Gandhi always quoted family as a reference for our Satyagraha in the national level. What would you do at home? Because the child not only need to be fed, the child has to be educated that there is something called sustenance and she has to cooperate and accept it. So there is a learning process while the struggle is going on. Britishers were taught through Satyagraha that when the victims respond to your injustice, you please listen. If, Brit if Britishers atrocity were responded with violence, the violence would have been made an issue and we would have been suppressed. When they did not retaliate, how long will they hit? They had to listen. There is a, a, a strategic uh, gradation in the uh, response to violence. The id response, the ego response and the super ego response. Our social life is a global life. Every individual, every moment is determined by global cooperation. You see the kind of communication we make. Uh, there are million people behind this communication system that make my voice reach you or connect, uh, we both connect each other. Every moment is determined by a global cooperation. So, that when we talk about life, 
it is the life of uh, humanity the life on the ecosystem that is what he meant so in, when we insist on life it start with individual when i am done injustice when i am done injustice i have to resist because uh, to live is not only my right it is my duty as well on the other side uh, in 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 the analysis of life gandhi says nature has given this life to us uh, and made us the custodian of life we are trustees to this life so we have a duty to protect this life protect this life and to that extent we have to fight we have to fight but then the social being that i am my life is determined by the collective endeavor of this world i am going to fight for my right with the macrocosm i have to deem myself as a microcosm of this macrocosm as a miniature of this society i am not a part of the society the new realization is that i am not just a part of the society i am a miniature of this society a microcosm of this society i mean there are a lot of social fabric analysis we can do to make us understand in the non dualistic sense in the advaitic sense that i and my society are not two different entity it is not me i am telling it is gandhi who said the advaitic truth i am part of the truth truth is an all encompassing reality in the concrete sense we can say i and my society are not two different entity the farmer who cultivated the food which i ate and spoke speak before me using that energy is my extended hand i cannot deny that if that hand is cut if the hand is weak i cannot say that i am strong i cannot say so with that non dualistic realization gandhi says you have you are fighting for your right with your own extended self then i cannot use violence in the non violence parlance if we engage in violence to solve the problem it is suicidal it is suicidal because i am hurting my own extended body i cannot do that in the constitutional sense we cannot do that it is i mean if we perceive somebody as my enemy because the person speaks ill about me or against my interest and i deem that person as uh, enemy that is my myopic understanding because that person may not have the perspective of a nation i am expected to have we are expected to have as uh, educated people in which gandhi gave lot of insights or uh, at least couple of insights i would like to share before i conclude one is friends he gave a very superior strategy of analyzing conflict and uh, one of the factors of analyzing conflict is the parties parties to conflict he gave a distinguishing factor my fight is with the wrong not with the wrong doer the wrong doer my brother is my brother and sister is my extended body if that is true then we cannot say that i will not be with the opponent i will not stand with the wrong person i will not stand with the wrong but i will have to stand with the wrong person if i disown the person i i bet i deny myself the right to negotiate with the person i cannot uh, disown the person i have to be with the person the my brother does not want to stay with me but i want friends if only we think on that line we can create a new nation otherwise we cannot we can fight we have the right to fight gandhi said it if you don't believe in non violence if you don't uh, have the strength of non violence nevertheless you fight for your justice cowardice is heinous it is worse than violence but uh, non violence is the weapon of the superior people we are supposed to be enlightened we are supposed to be uh, well informed uh, on the uh, peak of the civilization as of now we are expected to adopt a superior methodology so the wrong and wrong doer are not one and the same 
my fight is with the wrong not with the wrong doer the wrong doer is my brother and sister and this satyagraha is an attempt to bring my estranged brother or sister to sense it is not only ensuring justice to me it is ensuring an enlightenment to the opponent that is what satyagraha is so any struggle has to be educative not only to our people but to the opponent also if the opponent has to learn from us then our language has to be one of love caring inclusivity it cannot be hatred it cannot be enmity that drives our language it cannot be it is very important today if satyagrahis are failing or the non violent campaigners are failing because we allowed our mind to be corrupted with hatred and anger or exclusivity to put it mildly it is very unfortunate the people on the other side may appear to be very strong may appear to be uh, uh, very huge both in number and size and power but their understanding is weak their understanding is small then we have to deal with them as if we deal with them as a child with care and concern it is important if we think we are weak if we think we are small then satyagraha will not be a weapon cannot be a weapon effectively then that will be a kind of uh, passive resistance second uh, another point that is the last point i would like to bring that is satyagraha is a dharma yuddh the this uh, this sounds very uh, historical or uh, uh, feudalistic it is a dharma yuddh the dharma yuddh very clearly distinguishes if you learn from mahabharata in mahabharata uh, the whole war was not dharma yuddh the war from the side of the uh, five brothers pandav was dharma yuddh the yuddh from the other side kaurav side was not dharma yuddh why the uh, war on the side of the pandav were called dharma yuddh was because their objective was very clear their objective was to uphold dharma dharma is i mean in the very very uh, sociological sense it is a climate of survival a culture of living and letting others live that is what dharma dharma that uh, binds us together to make us successful is dharma and in that sense it is life sustaining principles values and the kaurav led by duryodhan was against dharma they did not want these five brothers to survive by denying even a, a small piece of land even the size of the tip of a needle he said i would not give to you that means in those days land was the basic sustenance and you you were denied of that sustenance that means i condemn you to death a king cannot condemn people to death then because the thought of king becomes law adharma becomes law and they wanted to resist and they wanted to uphold the dharma that was their objective killing the kaurav was never the objective of the pandav in fact their whole fight was moved by their love if you if you see the uh, uh, 18 days of war 18 days the the uh, mahabharat war every day evening when the war was uh, brought to a halt uh, as part of the dharma yuddh uh, they sat to take uh, stock of the situation every day pandav cried every day the pandav cried why because they did not want to kill they just wanted to restore they just wanted to bring sense to the other party they did not kill, want to kill but uh, uh, in a, a surgical endeavor like doctors make earnest effort to uh, save the life by under, undertaking a surgery sometimes fail the doctors when the patient die are really very hurt wounded that is what the mind of the pandavas they were trying to bring justice i mean uh, dharma uh, 
on the side of the kaurav and the effort was failing and uh, the nemesis was karna so long as karna was on the other side these people cannot be and the day karna was dead these people must have been happy but on that only they on that day only they cried a lot because that was not the objective their fight was moved by love their fight was uh, driven by the concern for inclusive justice for all the people that is what satyagraha and that is what we learn from gandhi if we rise to that level of perspective if we can see humanity as one society one if we see ecosystem as one entity of which i am an integral part i am the ecosystem if we can come into that perspective then all these uh, ideas of handling conflict through inclusivity will unfold in our act naturally if i know that you are my integral part you are my close brother and sister i will not take weapon it will not take so reperceiving nation reperceiving social uh, human society reperceiving uh, ecosystem as my own extension is a very essential precondition for reconstructing society through satyagraha thank you very much for the opportunity Thank you sir for a very insightful lecture